Gorilla Dada presents the science fiction thriller The Martian Chronicles 2145 to 2198 AD Space Time Life Death Past Present Future Now say that authenticity is everything. You have to wake up every day and look in the mirror and you want to be proud of the person who's looking back at you. And you can do that if you're being honest with yourself and being a person of high character. You have an opportunity every single day to write the story of your life. The year 2160 A.D. was a most significant year. Looking back, it seems that it was not just a year in the sense of time, it was a year of great realization, or what some might term awareness. It seems to me that at certain times in the history of mankind, the understanding of our position in the bigger realm, you know, our place in the overall story of the unfolding universe, well, it ripens. Everything aligns and fits together in those grand and fleeting moments. That is exactly what happened to me in 2160 AD. You might not think of it to look at me, but I was known as a stargazer for all of those many years ago. The year 2160 was the beginning of my relationship with Kamu. I logged in with reports from Mars on many occasions over the span of my fruitful career as a stargazer reporter. Here are some highlights from those reports. Seems like it's perpetually winter here on Mars, year-round. We're icicles everywhere. Today, whoa, I, I met him for the first time. His name is Kamu, ki kind of a husky little guy from some village in the Himalayas near Kathmandu in Nepal. He... Uh, he is most definitely a man of mysterious ways. Oh gosh, my internship required that I be ordered here, somewhere, near the northern Martian polar cap to cover some guy named Kamu and his absurd endeavor to climb up to the highest peak on Mars. He seems like a... Oh my... He seems like a stranger in a strange land. Talk about absurd. It's hard to believe that he will last long in this environment because he seems to be a big fish out of water. Uh, he even said to me yesterday, Forever I shall be a stranger to myself. <laughs> a stranger to himself. Well, anyway, Kamu started his climb yesterday and asked me to record these words for the people back on Earth. Here's what he said. If it were sufficient to love, things would be too easy. It's still 
brutally cold as all get out here on Mars. But upon my return, it seems that I am getting a little, a little more acclimated to this somewhat forsaken environment. The other day I said, hey, Camus, are you happy here on Mars climbing this unknown peak? Here's your typical answer from Camus. He says, I left all my sorrow and melancholy behind on Earth. I don't wish for happiness any longer. I take my joy from the task at hand. I don't know what that means exactly, but, but I think it's pretty heady stuff. Anyway, back to my report. Preparations are being made for a fourth expedition to the peak. After all of this trial and error, Kamu and his team have learned to use less gear and to bring, well, to bring less stuff, if you will. But there is always this evolving and challenging peak that exists in an ever-changing environment. An environment of heat and, and cold and, and, and sleet and ice and the ever-present danger of an avalanche. Instant death. Death is an ever-present possibility. She lurks behind every nook and cranny. The team always needs to be vigilant. Whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. That might be Kamu and his team's motto. Kamu himself, well, he, he seems to talk less and smile more. That doesn't give me as much material to report, but his spirit grows. You, you can sense it when, when you're in the room with him. I, I am meandering a bit. It is never easy when I visit Mars. The physical elements are very hostile to life. <laughs> it's gonna be a real challenge. Let me tell you. Anyway, one day, not too long ago, out of the blue, Kamu says to me, thinking is learning all over again how to see directing one's consciousness, making of every image a privileged place. Mars, a privileged place? Camus must be swimming in his own absurdity. Anyway, back to my report. Here on Mars, Camus is becoming quite famous, maybe even a legend. Heck. He may be the most revered and famous Martian there is. Everyone here on Mars knows the struggles of Camus. Oh, my tarnished gold brain cells. It's so damn cold. I'll never get used to it. I have been reassigned to what has become known on Earth as the ever-popular Camus Reports. My career seems to be tied to the events on Mars. My career as a journalist appears to be ever linked to the Camus Reports. <laughs> that may be this, this visit I joined the Camus Expedition for a few days. I was flowing into the camp near the final s s s s stages of the team's ascent. I just can't get used to this. As you might expect, Kamu and I have become closer. Maybe even friends. Be that as it may, very few words need to pass between us especially in our initial greetings to each other. We understand one another as if we are becoming old souls who are growing wise together. Anyway, back to the expedition. Boom! There I was, throwing right into the mix, climbing, climbing, straining against the elements. Fight on, struggle, retreat. New strategies. Take the lead. Fall back. Be a good follower. 
Be the rock, be the strength, but be ready to be the weakness too. Struggle, fight on, climbing, climbing. Pain, a sense of hopelessness sets in. Struggle, pain, one foot in front of the other. Follow the rhythm, pain, followed by more pain. I asked myself, is this misery we are after? Self-imposed misery? Struggle for what? Asking the universe why and getting no answer. The silence deafening enough to fill two or three universes. We still have to climb higher. We seem to be marching in place. Finally, one day, out of the blue of the Martian sky, Camus reminds me that we are there to negate the gods. He tells me that our fidelity is made up of something of greater purity. He claims that fidelity is made up of the fibers of the human soul. Now, these words are enough to make you climb a mountain against all odds. One day at around noon, the team was taking a short rest after crawling through the mud for hours and making slow progress. I yelled over to Camus. Hey, Camus! Is someone ordering you? Or maybe they are forcing you to keep repeating this absurd endeavor! He smiled at me with that all-knowing look on his face and said, No, I am free. I might be the most free man in the solar system. I choose this fate. My fate. I am happy to report that I am currently making preparations for my return to Earth. This year, I leave Camus and his team back at the starting point. Once again, they are at the foot of the mountain. A new expedition just beginning to take shape all over again. Physically, Camus is aging. Mentally, he is growing a little wiser with each and every step he takes. Let me tell you something of note. The glory of reaching the peak does not last. The triumph wanes quickly during the descent and the peak experience disperses like fleeting rainfall cascading and draining down the mountainside. This is absurd. I am back on Mars, contemplating the same age-old question. One always finds one's burden again. Lift the familiar backpack, strap on the climbing boots. All movements have been rehearsed. Fall into the team's rhythm of the climb. Once again, you find yourself up against the universe. This universe without a listening master. This is a caring universe. A, a universe that seems to be hostile and, and st st sterile and it makes the climbing utterly futile, futile inside this heavy and oppressive fog and gloom that I seem to surround myself. To my utter surprise, I had my own peak experience. I noted that each atom of every stone, each mineral flake of that night, combined with every fiber in my body, together we filled that mountain peak with vibrance. There we all were, on a faraway mountain peak on Mars, forming our own individual world. And as absurd as it may sound, many times, during contemplative moments on the side of this Martian peak, I felt the finite meeting the infinite and becoming one with the universe. This new and impossible alliance can only reside in the consciousness of man, 
Well, that was not so minor a discovery. Would I have found it any other way but on Mars? Did I need Camus to lead the way? Maybe. Towards the end of this particular expedition, Camus took me aside and told me that he hopes for just one thing for the future, and these are his words. I dream to be like the wind that sweeps over the mountain, swirling and eddying in the breath of creativity. Back on Mars again. Hey, I'm getting used to the cold. Gomu is now old and thin. His simple backpack reflects his need for almost nothing. He travels with his walking stick and nearly nothing more than the clothes on his back. He claims to be totally detached from the material of this universe. What remains is the spirit of a man, his essence, if you will. The Martians have already named the tallest peak on Mars after him. Mount Camus. While Camus has been dedicated to this extreme act of absurdity, I have to ask myself, what have I done? What have I accomplished in my life? I must admit that I have never met another human being as brave as Camus. Not on any planet in our solar system. And I have been to all of them. In some respects, the struggle itself towards the heights is enough to fill a man's heart. One must view Camus as a happy man, authentic and fulfilled, but still absurd. What a paradox that leaves us with. How to find me in an existence that is inherently meaningless. This leaves us with the absurd contradiction. The absurd contradictions of the Kabu reports. Do they have any value? Why am I here? Does anyone out there really care about me or Kabu? My hands are cold. Well, at least I didn't have to climb any mountains on this visit. Camus' retreat center is nonetheless freezing, still freezing. Many years have passed since my last report from here on Mars. Camus spends a great deal of his time in slow walking meditation. He quietly slow dances on the side of the mountain he so loves. Seeing him there on the slopes, it's, it's like a dream. The images of tranquility sear their way into my brain with such a bewildering clarity. These moments I will never forget until the day I die. These days, Camus gives these little talks like, like a Zen master followed by sessions where he retreats into solitude, combined with walking meditation. This is his living of the fate that he so treasures, the fate he has chosen. One misty day, he seemed to be riding a cloud. The illusion was so I will never forget this moment. He said, The gods cannot punish me. I do not dream of anything better than what is present before me. I own my fate. It is in my living of this fate and its inherent futility that I find amusement. And it is through this amusement that I am set free. And if I may add to the closing of this report, a man who is free in this universe is rare indeed. Yikes! Be to the 
gods, it's still b b b b b bitter cold here on Mars. I will never get used to it. Oh, this is my 25th visit to Mars. And it'll be my last ever. I will not be coming back. I am relocating to Florida, where I have my own life-threatening health issues to worry about. I am right here in the present. And this is Mars near Kamu Mountain. Oh, my, please. Excuse me for being so disheveled, but I have had my soul pierced by sad events of late. This is one of them. This is my final account of events here on Mars. I, I am sorry to report that Kamu has indeed become the spirit in the wind that swirls in creative eddies across the sides of the peaks of his beloved mountain. He died under a tree that he'd planted over a half century ago. Come on. <laughs> Come on. As of today, the universe isn't the same. There, there's a huge hole in the center of the universe. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I am so sad, but goodbye, my old friend. Goodbye. Kamu once said, there's no longer a single idea explaining everything but an infinite number of essences giving a meaning to an infinite number of objects. The world comes to a stop, but also lights up. Man, woman, birth, death, infinity. and beyond.